Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Welcome to our 2019 February 13th meeting. And it's a, well, tri-board meeting, but uh, we have a representative. We have Amy Feidenkevich here from the um, Finance Committee, and we have Superintendent Ann for our select board, uh, from our school committee to represent them. So we can uh, get into our meeting tonight. We're doing a buzz, budget, budget presentation and uh, doing our annual town meeting closure and review. So we'll start with the um, budget presentation. Okay. You have before you the budget proposal for FY2020. Uh, represents a balanced budget and using estimated revenues and recommended expenses. It achieves the goals set out by the board selection, and I'll enumerate those in a little bit. In order to understand some of the decisions that I had to make in order to put together a balanced budget for FY2020, we have to remember how we got to the balanced budget in FY2019. And if you remember at the time, we uh, brought on a board an ambulance service, which relied on, our, on more free cash than we had originally planned to spend. We had a balanced budget going into uh, into budget season with $125,000 of free cash. With the addition of the ambulance service, we had to bump that up to nearly $400,000 of free cash. In order to make that expenditure of free cash possible, we had to alter the way that we looked at our OPEP, and what we did was we did a one-time transfer from stabilization of about $263,000 to fully fund our OPEP at the uh, and keep us on target. So all in all, that's a lot of ground to catch up on. But catch up we did. Um, our revenues for FY2020 are projected to show an increase in revenue by $568,000. Our state aid net, uh, take all the ins and outs of assessments and offsets and you can see a $200,000 increase there. That's a very generous increase in state aid. And that's something to watch as we move forward into the budget season and see what the legislature does to the governor's budget proposal. Local receipts amount to about $340,000, and it includes two new revenue streams for the first time. First of all, ambulance rebate. Right now, based upon six months of data, our ambulance looks like it's going to exceed our expectations in terms of revenue. That's both revenue from patients as well as the town contribution. And we could see a, a rebate of $112,000. And if you've been down to the old Sunoco station in the last couple of days, you can see that they're renovating it, so the medical marijuana facility is being constructed with a target date of sometime in May. We have a host community agreement with them, uh, which says that they have to pay us $50,000 in the first or third, second quarter of FY20. So there's an additional $50,000. Revenues from uh, enterprise funds is $73,000. So that's a total of gross, not adjusting for the enterprise funds, of $1.2 million of new money on the table. Where are you reading from, David? Is it from the book? Yeah. What page summarizing, are you? I'm summarizing. Oh, I guess we're going to follow along with you on the page. If you go he did it sit in his head. See, well, yeah, a lot of that. <laughs> if you go to the FY 2020 revenue and expenditure summary, it has the, the details there. Okay. Revenues in the general fund of eight, mm -hmm. $18.79 million, and then expenses of $19.374 million, leaving a shortfall of a little bit more than half a million dollars. We're using free cash for one-time expenses of $339,000. And then free cash for the uh, recurring expenses. Uh, we had reset the, the, the base level. We were at 125, we're now 300, almost 400,000. 
our policy is to reduce our reliance by $75,000 per year until we reach zero. I'm being aggressive in this budget. I'm reducing our reliance by $133,000. That means there's $235,000 going to recurring revenue, recurring revenue expenses within the omnibus budget, a little higher than I wanted it to be, but the best I can do. And then there's some minor adjustments to the budget, which bring us to a balanced budget in the general fund. So, David, what are you using as an estimate of free cash? I'm using $650,000 free cash as an estimate. I think that's a safe and conservative number. So there'd be some excess in the fall. Well, I'm projecting that there'll be a surplus again, according to the select board policy, that you wanted a surplus of seventy-five thousand dollars of free cash to be applied to capital. So using using this budget recommendation, we achieve that seventy-five thousand dollars of surplus. So. So based on the summary that you just provided, just a couple of things that, that I heard. So the medical marijuana number yep. is a little somewhat speculative at this point, right? Mm, that's much more solid than the ambulance uh, rebate. Well, the ambulance rebate for sure, because that's based on six months, and then uh, McLanca hasn't taken a look look at that. So that, that could move around. And then um, state aid could be impacted by whatever the House and Senate come up with. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. These numbers are very likely to change as we get further into the state budget process. And how, um, with the other revenue line items, how aggressive do you feel that you've been? Is it more in line with they're based upon six months estimates, so it's revenue uh, projections through December. Um, I haven't seen the January revenue projections yet, so as soon as I do, and as soon as we have more data, we can get a little closer to what the number should be. It's one of the things that we've done the past couple of years is we had um, the financial management team, so making sure there's representation from the finance committee and Dan Sadonik mm -hmm. and Susan and Linda. Um, recommend a revenue figure to work with? Yeah. So have, have they chimed in on any of that yet? Or? No. Okay. Yet. So I think we should probably do that sooner rather than later. Just right. make sure everybody's comfortable with the revenue. Okay. Yeah. So in the enterprise funds, we have revenues of about $2 million, expenses of $2.1 million, leaving a shortfall of 24000 which is made up for by the reserve accounts, 10,000 for the water, 10,000 for the sewer, and 4,825 for cable TV reserves, which brings us to a balance. So the expenses, okay, so looking at the goals of the select board, uh, goal one was the human resources department. <coughs> Budget number 152 is the human resources department that consists of a director, a benefits coordinator who is Joan Fusco, and she's seat assignment will be in that room still, but uh, her pay will be coming out of the uh, human resources uh, department. And there's money for uh, usual expenses customary for the uh, human resources, so dues, travel, professional development, uh, that kind of stuff. Goal 2.1, redeployment of administrative support staff within the town hall. We transferred five hours of clerical support from the select board to the tax collector. And I'll come back and talk a little bit about the nuances of doing that. And reclassified the assistant tax collector as the water and billing and water and sewer billing coordinator. We transferred five hours from the building inspector clerical assistant to the treasurer and reclassified that at a higher order function of assistant treasurer. Uh, we supplemented with uh, senior tax work off program and there's a stipend in the budget for interns. So with that, we hope to achieve a higher levels of support and allow for higher level functions of the tax collector's office, treasurer's office, 
Um, goal 2.2, the finance director function is uh, achieved by adding five hours to the treasurer. So it goes from 35 hours to 40 hours per week. Um, goal 2.3, interns in the senior tax workout program. Goal three is to maintain a sustainable public safety service in FY2020, so the very limited uh, cuts in those departments where you see a uh, recommended reduction in budget. I did it with the idea of keeping our public safety service sustainable throughout the fiscal year. So, so real quick question um, on um, the town hall mm -hmm. budget issues. Obviously, this is the year for general government, so that we kind of squeeze in everything that we needed to do out of, uh, as far as Molly put the, the goals and objectives of town hall that we, I mean, obviously we just got this, so I mean, yeah. you I mean, I think we've, we've touched on touched on everything, but, um, I mean, I, you know, I believe in MIT, right. you know, uh, finance director, so I think we're making inroads, if I can put it that way. Okay. Um, yeah, I wish I could do more with this budget, but based upon what I have right now, I think I've pushed it as far as we can reasonably expect to go. Go point uh, four point one review of annually water and sewer rates to maintain those uh, enterprise funds. Go five point one support the operation and physical needs of the departments displaced by the demolition of old senior centers. So you'll notice there's a lot of renovation going on in this town hall. There's been adjustments to the budget in order to make sure that these displaced departments are adequately supported so they can maintain their functions. Goal 6.1, this has to do with annual OPEP contributions. We're raising that by 2.5% in order to keep track with our annual contribution targets. 6.2, I uh, just talked about this. We'll restart our reliance on free cash to fund recurring expenses within the operating budget and according to the select board's free cash policy. 6.3, We'll use excess free cash and certified in the summer, anything above that 650 number, to replenish the stabilization account at $263,000 if possible. Hey, David, I don't mean to interrupt you. Do you have another copy of this? Over? I just am missing the pages. Makes it a challenge. Thank you. Oh, no, I, this one has it, so I'm good. And I'll just send that back. The Fleming? Yep, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Swap. Well, I, I, well, well, like, I don't need your book, Joyce. No. Well, <laughs> well, Thank you. Well, okay. I got it. Okay, this makes it easier to follow along. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. So just to me. Are you just in the same boat? Yeah, he's missing the. Yep. Here, try this one. And this is available online on Board Talks, by the way. Yeah, it's, that'll make much more sense, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so just to sum up, there's this was a very, very tough budget. Um, I had to make a lot of decisions that are going to be unpopular. A lot of departments made many recommendations and requests that are entirely reasonable and in a perfect world with enough cash, we should be supporting them. Um, I, however, did not have that luxury and I had to make cuts wherever I could. Cuts to cuts to budgets, cuts to requests, and those cuts amount to about $350,000. So there's a lot not to like in this budget, but it is balanced. David, can I just ask a question? Um, I'm just looking at the ambulance. So if we... What page is that, Molly? Uh, 63. So this year, and, and I know, again, we, we just went on record say it's squishy, but we contracted in FY19 for a price tag of 267000 mm -hmm. And it's possible that we're going to get a rebate. It's 
I'd say it's probable we're going to get a rebate. There's a question of what that rebate might be. Mm -hmm. But just for the sake of argument, let's say it winds up being 100000 um, And for the record, that will actually bring the cost of the ambulance service below the proposal that we got from Amherst. To mm -hmm. just, um, but in the FY20 budget, you have what looks like the full contractual amount of 282. Yeah. So is it possible that that might be something less than that? Leave it the same. I mean, wouldn't we assume that we would, if you would leave it the same, John? Yeah, if there's going to be that much of a return, why, why would you? But wouldn't that be like taking the school and putting the credit we get from the estates and the assessments we've got to pay to combine them in one and say it's a net of? You no, know, it's only fifteen thousand, but if you're looking for a place to start squeezing. Well, where I was going was, it, and so are we assuming that next year, so if we're putting the full expense amount in here for the contract, which which is right, that's the right way to do it, I think, mm -hmm. but somewhere else um, in the revenues, are you showing that we might also get a rebate next year? That's what I want. Yeah, so I have I have that money coming due to us in FY 2020s for $112,000. The oh, following, right, right. Following, it's the following year that we would get the next round. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. And where's that money going? It goes to the general fund. We have any other questions? No. Just got this. Yes. It did. I, ha I have a question on the fire department, but. I don't know if this is where we want to talk about it now. I know we're just getting into the budget now. Mike had put in for a um, uh, clerical work 18 hours a week, and he had moved a couple of accounts around so that it didn't cost the fire department anything to reinstitute that 18 hours. Mm -hmm. And you somehow took that away the 18 hours the clerical work and took the money that he was saving and had moved around in his accounts and took it out of his budget totally so we we need to we need to talk about that yep. and i just wanted to bring that to your attention because it wasn't anything added it was just money that was already in the accounts um so i guess we'll just have further discussion on that absolutely it's one of those okay very reasonable requests that I simply couldn't support with the money that I had. But it's not anything that was being asked for extra. But we'll we'll talk about yeah. it. It's not a, it's not an argument. The discussion. chief has already come to see me, by the way. Okay. So well, I know, but I just wanted people to be aware that that was one of the things. So there was no move around. There was move around the money um, and put you know line items. So um, just as a general question, then kind of related to that. So Mike. Mike already obviously spoke up, but um, have all of the department heads been notified yet where there's an adjustment or your present? What's the process we're following? Are you giving, making this public for the first time? I'm making this public for the first time. Everybody's okay. going to get a copy of it. It's posted online. Yeah. Um, but then will you be interacting with the various department heads? I shall. And fielding yeah. complaints? Okay. Before everybody <laughs> starts calling us and complaining. Let's review this so that we'll go through his speech here and then we can start discussing it. Yeah, exactly. So we just want to make sure everybody knows where we're at in the right. process. And so the finance committee will have and, and a go at it. And we could set up times for them to come in after. Yeah. So that was one of my questions for the board and the finance committee is how do we want to review these, these numbers. Uh, last year, the select board said, Let's give that task to the finance committee to meet with the department heads, and then if there's any areas of disagreement, let's focus it on that. Yeah, I think we had talked about kind of like a conference committee to iron out the differences between what you're proposing and what they're asking for, mm -hmm. and then they can kind of, you know, we could be the uh, the neutral party that's, I guess, deciding because you, know, you created the budget and they have an issue with it, and then bring it in front of either us or the a group of us from the finance committee sure. from the select board and then you know make that decision whether we need to cut elsewhere or maintain that or, or what yeah because if we have you have you had to forego the department head meeting right mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You rescheduled it. Yeah, right. Rescheduled for, yeah. for March. March six. Oh, March six. Yeah. So not for another few weeks. Will this be brought up at that time, or are we going to delve into this? Ahead I was going to delve into it beforehand. Okay. Because it may feel like a long time to town meeting, but it's actually pretty short. So. And we have two sides of the equation. It seems like we need to have. Uh, I forget what you call it. It's not the finance committee, but the uh, conference committee. The financial committee is that what's oh, called? Oh, the fin management. financial management team. Financial management team mm -hmm. needs to get together to get kind of a sign off on the revenues, correct? Right. And then we need to do something on the expenses side mm -hmm. to see if those line up. Mm -hmm. So the revenue side could happen fairly quickly, I would think. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a little bit of information. I just uh, if we can do that sort of conference committee, whatever we want to call it, that way there is no um, you know cl last minute claims before town meeting like we had last time of saying, well, I didn't know about this, and, and well, this way they everybody has their chance to you know, make an appeal. Right. Mm -hmm. So beforehand, right? So do we have that formed yet, or is it? No, no. I mean, yeah. I don't think we were talking about it yeah. before the but, yeah. special town meeting. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how we would form it or what it would be made up of, but. Does the finance committee want to have their own independent review? I, I part think of we something could do like it that? like just, we have a hard enough time sometimes making the quorum or making enough. So, I mean, we don't have a problem with having it, but definitely does not have to be just us. Yeah. We welcome it to be jointly. Right, so why, why not have some representation from the yes. select board participate? Maybe at a finance committee meeting, well, the select board comes, some representation from the select board comes and attends your meeting, and that's... The either that, or we both review. do it together at the table. Yeah, I mean, You know, why we can do it just jointly. It's, yeah. We're not voting on anything. We're just listening at the time, so there's no vote, right? So could we just yes. do it jointly? Well, I think the idea was to not, to not have all of the departments coming to try to make it more efficient. Sure. Because what we did in the past was we had... Right. One or two a night or something. Yeah, like for like every meeting for a while, we have multiple departments coming through, and then it was kind of shoved into the normal agenda. So, to be honest with you, we kind of gave them short shrift a lot. Yeah, I wouldn't put it with a with a select board meeting because yeah. you have too much, too much, too many other things going on. I, when we did it, it was purely just for that. So, if we were doing public safety, it was just public safety. That's all we talked about. It was just them. We pulled them right up to the table and. Let them discuss whatever they wanted to discuss. Yeah. And listen. Well, I was thinking, um, I don't know if we could do one extra meeting devoted to it or do something like you're talking, but then and, and not have, I don't want the department heads to come here and go over their whole budget with us. Exactly. We just want to talk about the, the, the one or two sticking points, something that was cut and that's an issue exactly. or something they didn't get, that's going to be a showstopper for, them for the coming year. Mm -hmm. And that way, hopefully, we're not spending a ton of time on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we know budget time takes extra meetings anyway, so right. Right. we could certainly designate you know, starting in March. We have a meeting February 27th, but maybe on, on another meeting in March, too, that we have people come in just for that meeting but we, alone. You mean start start the process February 27th? Right? Yeah, we have, what are we doing February 27th? That's the senior center contract, contract. contract. general contract or yeah. contract. And so we're coming then on the 27th. I am. I will be super speedy. Right. <laughs> but we can start the meeting at six o'clock, right, to tack on some well, time. I, I will be here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so this is good. Yeah, it may be a big long meeting. We could do we could do a six thirty because that seems a little yeah, bit more convenient. Six thirty. Yeah. We said the twenty seventh was six thirty right now, but we did say that. Yeah, yeah, we did say that. So that would be fine. So we could add on. Um, is six thirty good for all you guys? So are we doing? Is that what we're doing? We're gonna just have the one meeting for all the departments that come in one at a time. Do you want to do it by division? That's uh, so what I would think. Yeah, we would do it by division last time. So sometimes do, they want to talk a lot. Sometimes they don't have much to talk about at all. Right. But, but to David's point, to David Phil's point, yeah. we, we don't want to walk through every. We didn't single want to walk through, but we really let them. Yeah, if they had something to vent. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we just need to make it clear that this is their one shot, and then that you know the night before town meeting, we don't want to be hearing about. Well, I didn't know about this. You yeah, know, or we don't want to have. Mm, 
Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, it's a, it's a listening <laughs> session. We hear what they have to say. We're right. not making any guarantees. Right. right. But we hear it and we put it on a list. And then In other words, we're not going to make any other decisions on town meeting floor this year that right. weren't already talked about in budget right. time. So at least we can make that clear ahead of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, what was the date that you were in? 27th will start. 27th of February? Mm -hmm. And then the financial management team might meet. Hopefully before then. Before then. Yeah. To go over the revenue. Mm -hmm. Just try to find time. So, on the 27th, are we are we looking to do it on when, every Wednesday or something until you Wednesday. get through on Wednesdays before? The extra Wednesday of the month. Oh, the extra. So, are you going to have a regular meeting too? Not that night. No. No, but just be just focused just, on just that. Just budget. Just budget. It'll be posted as a regular meeting, right? Regular select board meeting. It'll be a select yeah. board meeting, yeah. but budget. Okay. With finance and whoever else. And whatever else gets thrown in there. <laughs> well, we're going to try and keep it at that. We'll keep our other two meetings okay. for other business and just really one meeting a month to just designate for the uh, budget time. Okay. Okay. And departments. And do you want to meet with the general government division? Because that's got the most moving pieces in this budget. I would say so. Start with that. I would, that, that's the biggest one. The rest of them are, should be the, not as... You know, decisions made about general business sort of drive everything else. Yeah. That'll be fine. So that would be town February hall? February 27th. And fire? No, no, no. No, public safety is no just one. No public safety is just one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be, so you have the, so the big ones, or you got the, I mean, the public safety <coughs> probably won't be a big one this year. But you got the town government is going to be a big one in the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Plan. Uh, these Wednesdays open. <laughs> will you just send an email out to the department heads then, maybe, and just like tomorrow, and just let them know, you know, in case you're not already aware. Something we're watching right now, anyway. But in case you're not already aware, the draft budget <coughs> proposal is available online yep. just so because again sometimes we've had oh i just saw it for the first time right. and no one told me that and they'll give a hard copy in the boxes as well okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. let's go is that it for the budget right now that's it for the budget no, okay. the town, meeting. town meeting warrant um this Asking for a closure of town meeting warrant tonight. Anybody want to make a motion? Can you make a motion to close the town meeting warrant? A second. Um, and then we'll do discussion. Well, second, second and then yeah. I'll second it. Uh, yeah. It says yes. town meeting closure and review. Are we walking through it? I can touch on the. Uh, the How many articles? Well, like, I mean, is there anything like new? I guess yeah. we're not going to touch on everything. From what we've already seen. Yeah. So the new There's things. There are a couple of new things. Okay. All right. So the first new thing is the omnibus budget and enterprise funds. I talked in a previous uh, pre uh, preview of the warrant that we be handling that in four articles. We're now handling it in two. We did some more gaming on this, and we were able to consolidate general fund and the enterprise funds into two articles rather than four. Um, article 12, the acceptance of unclaimed property statute. This is a housekeeping article that's new. Article 14, private duty detail revolving fund. That's $19,000. This may be deferred to the fall town meeting without harm. This is for our police do details. Uh, there's often a lag between payment. We're in the hole. Yeah, we're always in the hole. We're in the hole with that. They don't pay on time. No, the problem we ran into was when they did the first, the second section of Route 9 here, there was tons and tons of hours that weren't paid on time. Correct. And they wanted to expand that, right? right. Yeah, so if we could have a larger seed I know we're gonna be we're gonna be working right now. And it's not like the money doesn't come. No, the, back the money comes back, just but it just yeah. needs to be there. Yeah, it's yeah. time. Exactly. It's timing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> I don't. I mean, 
I don't see why we couldn't do a non annual. Yeah, I don't see why not either. Just a matter of finding $19,000. Oh, funding. <coughs> okay, we'll wait and see. We'll, well, we just, marker. well, we just found 15 in the ambulance. <laughs> Organa. <Organic. laughs> okay, we'll consider that. We'll see. You can leave it for now. All right, articles, articles 16 through 22. There's seven CPA articles. Mm -hmm. We have 23 is the sidewalk snow removal general bylaw. Okay. Uh, then we have. You're going to leave that in there? We're taking that out, yeah. yeah. Well, You're taking it out? You told me to put it in. No, we told them to put it in. Why would we be taking it out? We're going to be in there and have discussion on it before we remove it. Let's leave it until we discuss. Because we were talking about down at the other end there. We're not going to be plowing the sidewalks down there on. In front of the like I said, I really like so to we see need to have a discussion. I'd really like to see what the lawyers got to say and the state's got to say and who's gonna be liable for all that. Alright, so let's leave it for now until we have further information. Okay, so a couple of articles related to uh adult use marijuana. Uh smoke on planning the planning board is working on an MS4 stormwater zoning bylaw. And there are three requests for zoning issues. One is an acceptance of the private way, Megan's way. Where's that there? That's up by Hilltop. No, I'm, I'm sorry. No, where is, where is it on the, what article? That's 27. Oh, there's no 27 it just on It just got here. It's in the... Yeah, it just, just came in today. It's the second gotcha. one on tonight's agenda. Here's gotcha. Yeah, I saw the Megan's way letter. Okay. It's just not on the document. Not on the yeah. docket, yeah. There is a request from the building inspector to redo the zoning bylaws having to do with signs. A request for a senior overlay district amendment to extend it for a parcel north of the bike path. What was that last one? This is for the senior dis overlay district, senior housing overlay district. There's a section of the center of town that is uh, supportive of senior housing. Okay. There is a parcel north of the bike path in Middle Street uh, that uh, somebody is suggesting that we should extend the district to include so that parcel. Yeah. And you said the building inspector was asking for the Sign. article about signage? Yeah. So does the planning board know? Or? By law, we have to send all of this to the planning board anyway, so if they don't know, they will. But, okay, so I didn't know if they already okay. were aware of it or not. Um, I can't recall it. <laughs> yeah, they'll let us know. I'll take okay. that as a no. <laughs> we'll wait for their detail on what that entails. And then the final one is Article 30. That's for a petition article to address concerns about the Massachusetts state flag. And a copy of it is right there. It's Does that ten under capital? The placeholder, the school's placeholder. Would that be that ten? That'd that be number sure. ten. Ten capital. That's fine. The in events and the um, potential uh, estimate the green, of the locker. The girls' locker. Okay. Yeah, they're both in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Who property is that we're talking about that wants to extend it to? Which property are we looking at? Um, I'll have to dig up that detail. I just got it just before the before four o'clock. So is it Middle Street, or is it East River Street. Drive, or is it East Street? Where Where are we looking at that? So I think it's Middle Street. Middle Street, because that's River Road. Because if you go down to Swazi's. No, it's really oh, not, middle. Not, not their their oh. house, not their land. Okay. Yeah. You mean the one right on? They just put the one in there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I know. We're zeroing in. <laughs> yeah, I know where you mean. Now. There'll be a tour it's across the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying not to describe I'm trying it, to get my head in, into this where it is. Okay, I got it now. Um, okay. Anything else on the town warrant for anybody? That's it. All right, motion to close the warrant. Did we second? Uh, we, did. we did a motion. And yes, 
Okay. All, those okay. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is carried and the warrant is closed. All right. It's five after seven, and I guess we'll go into. Oh, Dr. McKenzie, would you like to add anything to the. Oh, no, I, one, I, want to, excuse me. I will say this uh, sincerely. Thank you. I know I will say from the school department side, we had a lot of um, unfortunate, right now, what looked like unexpected and unfortunate conditions in terms of discontin discontinuation of grants. And the request that we sent over was um, really challenging to work with. I had forewarned Hopkins that if they heard a blood curdling scream, it was probably just a town administrator and he'd probably be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> he sent the email over. And so I know that's challenging. I appreciate the work that all of you all do in making these um, recommendations and decisions. And the school department budget, as, as David knows, just like what he's dealing with, is it's we don't have a lot of time before town meeting, but it's really very early when you think about what you actually know for the, for the coming year. There's a lot of big dates that we pay attention to in terms of finance, and we don't, all we have is the governor's budget. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So we have, a, we have a ways to go, but thank you very much for all your hard work and for taking the requests of the school department seriously to all of you, and thanks to the town and the finance committee. The school department is keenly aware of all of its employees, how supportive you are at the schools, and we really appreciate it. So thank you. And I hope when I come back, they'll bring you better news next time. <laughs> now I'm going to go to a grant meeting. I'm going to buzz out. So all right. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, too. We appreciate yes. it. Happy to. We like to it's a great work. place to work with the best DPW and the cleanest roads in town. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't tell you where I drive from because I would be wrong. <laughs> you might put a snowbank in front of your house. Yeah. <laughs> I know you make a good point. Never mind. Everybody's great. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, they can't pick you up over there. <laughs> thank you. So that's a good thing to mention at the beginning of our meeting is that uh, thank you to the uh, Hadley DPW for our streets and uh, the good job that they do on each storm. We do appreciate it. Um, and keep in mind always your safety out there. And, Thanks for a job well done this storm. Great job. Okay. And a reminder. And a reminder to shovel your know. to shovel out your fire fire hydrant. hydrants. Um, we got lucky this time. We kind did of faded away, but. And if you did notice that the um, Springfield City of Springfield um, fines their residents if they don't shovel out their hydrants. So we need to have to move to that, but it's a matter of safety for everybody. So the cheapest form of fire insurance will be worth it. Uh -huh. yeah. True. All right. So we will go into consent agenda, which has the minutes of not. We have warrants AP 1932 and AP 1932S. Um, we have a DPW transfer as field superintendent. William Kelly uh, will uh, be transferring from the DPW Highway Department to the DPW Water Distribution Department. And we have a common vehicular license from Subway, uh, 337 Russell Street, Hadley, Walmart, uh, to Frank Patel. Is that a transfer from Walmart to Walmart? Yeah, one? it was originally, originally presented as a resignation. I asked Mr. Kelly to refer. No, 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 the subway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Moving from, uh, moving from the Hampshire Mall to the uh, Mountain Farm Mall. <coughs> to the Mountain Farm Mall? Any more? Mall Mart. Yeah. Mall Mart and Mall Farm is two branches. There, the is, other way around. there is a subway in Walmart now. There is a subway. Oh, that's yeah, right. They're coming out the right hand side. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where's it going now? There's, there'll be a subway at, uh, at Walmart, and there'll be a subway over in the store in the Hampshire Mall. <coughs> Can make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Sure. I'll we'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Abstain. Abstain. Any public comments? I know where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have a, we could actually, 
that's what we could do. Um, welcome to Kessel Land Trust Partnership Grant. You're here to enlighten us on <coughs> what, what we have, anything developed with that? Sure. I, I, I don't Paul, have a this whole... This is Paul Gagnon. Yeah, Paul okay. Gagnon from Kessel Land Trust. Um, I don't have um, as much news as I would hope to have had. Um, the, the state was supposed to issue uh, uh, grants at the end of December, and they've been holding off for reasons of their own understanding. So, um, so we keep be we, we're being told that it could happen any day now. It's going to happen, but they can't give us a date when it's going to happen. So we don't know the results of that grant yet. But um, there are some been some other developments I can share with you. Um, we did get you know we did get some positive feedback about our grant, so that's that's encouraging. Um, uh, the other things I can share with you are that um, uh, we you know last time I, I was here there was some discussion and concern about hunting on conservation lands and confusion about where hunting could happen and you know on DCR lands on Kestrel lands on other lands and so what Kestrel has done is we have um, on our website we have put up information about where hunting is allowed in our lands we made a distinction between land we own and land we don't own um, and um, that should help clarify things in the event that somebody is still confused they can always call us um, on DCR's end they've asked me to, to tell you that they are moving forward with trying to define the boundary between Skinner State Park which because of the will the wishes of the, the, the Skinner family who gave the land to the state there's no hunting and the rest of the, the park up on the range which hunting is allowed and so right now they're digging through their paper to find the paper version of where that boundary is. And once they get that figured out, then they can find it on the ground and mark it. So it's moving forward. The state's a little slow and stuff like that because of their bureaucracy, but we didn't take it seriously. And I keep nudging them as well. So um, hopefully sometime in the next year, we'll see something move forward with that. And we appreciate that. Yeah. And I'm fairly confident that tonight on Facebook, Anybody who's connected to David's Facebook page will be made aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, I, I mean, it, the big thing was we got their attention now. They're not just ramming this stuff forward without talking to the town and its citizens. That's, that's all I wanted to do originally. And David, you know, it was there was just a lot of complaints and there was a lot of people being squashed, you know, and it just wasn't right. Sure. It stayed not on your end. Right. Your end was, we didn't have all the information, you know, along with uh, Silvio Connors. Sure. And, you know, um, I think, you know, we're all on the same page, you know, including DCR and, and the Conte that, that, you know, that we want to support hunting and, and, and find ways to, you know, conserve more land where people can hunt on it. So, um, but like I said last time, if, if you have any ideas about land, this good hunting land that could be conserved, let us know. We can, we can try to bring that to the top of our agenda. Well, I will say, since our, and it might just be coincidence, but uh, since our conversations this summer during deer season when I was out on Silvio Conti, I had an environmental police officer who came up and checked my permit and said, Have a nice day. And, Everything was well. You didn't get chased off this year, so good excellent. Good. 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 Sometimes all you have to do is talk to people and yeah. you know, figure things out. Um, the other thing I can share with you is that that when we brought the uh, when we brought the, uh, the, the the question of the Hadley watershed lands up on the range to um, state um, in terms of the grant, um, they 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 it is their position that that land is un, is protected under Article ninety seven. Now it still can be used for the grant. It's going to be worth less for the grant in terms of um, its match value, but we have other sources of match that we can apply. So we, we're still going to come up with the same amount of conservation in the end. Um, but I just thought I should let you know that they do consider that Article 97. Um, is that put, the town owned land? You're that's the town owned land, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, be, and it's just because um, it's uh, they look at any kind of land that was uh, conserved for the purpose of water supply protection regardless of when it was conserved as falling under article 97. that's their position it's it could be argued in, in a court but um that's been their position throughout the state from what i understand um, so it's still 
applicable. And certainly the acreage is going to count, It'll be very helpful to it completing this project and there'll be some match value in terms of dollars if we put a conservation restriction on it that creates affirmative public access to that property, which currently doesn't exist. So that's all I have. Uh, hopefully I'll, in the next week or so, I'll have something to say about the state grant. Well, just let us know. We're more than happy to have you back. Thank you so much. Yeah, anytime. I have one other question. Just do you ever do um, timber management plans or anything along those lines with that kind of land? Just to yep. Yeah, and, and that would be something that, that I assume that you would want to do there, be able to yeah. be able to get some value out of the out of the timber there periodically and mm -hmm. that is something that we do on a lot of conservation land. And it, Suggestion was made, um, one of the things we're always trying to do is find uh, opportunities to work with the university mm -hmm. and engage with their students. And suggestions have been made a couple of times that maybe we could engage with a forestry management undergrad, grad student or whatever who could be vetted to come up with a... I guess we can actually get it, you can get a forestry management plan through the plan, through the state, uh, for free. Is my understanding. I don't know if you're familiar with those plans. Yeah. I'm not it, exactly sure how you apply for that, but that's what I've heard. And I mean, you could do it either way. Um, it, it, you know, if you did forestry out there under a conservation restriction, you'd need to have a plan, but you'd want to have a plan anyway, so... Right. I think the idea was to try to yeah, find a way could to, do this to work with um, John yeah. Edwards has mm -hmm. suggested it a couple of times and we're hoping to try to yeah. see if we could work something out with UMass. Yeah, that would be get, you know, yeah, a good way to, to have yeah. hands on. Mm -hmm. We have Absolutely. done some walking out there in past years. Long time ago. Long time ago, but I do remember us doing that. Yeah. As everything, things need to get overgrown and taken care of too, so. Do we have to go um, work with conservation on that, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot more people involved, but yeah. even with the fire access roads and the old county roads that still go through that mountain, you know, we, we periodically maintain those throughout the years. Mm -hmm. The last 35 years that I know, mm -hmm. we've been up there a few times. Well, yeah, because every now and then there'll be a little fire that crops up up yeah, there. Well, some the fires we had really opened everybody's eyes on on access and mm -hmm. where the roads were and what, what we could do and what we couldn't do up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really needs to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, look forward to you coming back, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Back to Water Abatement, 19 Grand Oak Farm Road. Certainly, if you all have looked at this, it doesn't look like it's not recommended for a rebatement. Um, evidently, they had gotten some wrong information and never uh, would bother to go back and check their meter um, when the irrigation system was watering every day from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So unfortunately, it's not a town uh, fault. Um, so therefore, went through the meter. Went through the meter so. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like uh, there we can allow this abatement. But does anybody have any other thoughts or questions on it, or otherwise I'll entertain a motion. Motion to deny the water abatement for 19 Grand Oak. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. About that property. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I was thinking about this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a community preservation committee special employee designation status. What would that be, David? Well, right now we have a number of special municipal employees, which uh, relaxes some of the standards uh, under the State Ethics Commission, particularly having to do with. Um, appearing before the body that you're a member of and representing a client. We have a member of the CPA who does that on a regular basis. He's requested that the CPA um, committee be designated a special municipal employee in order to not violate the state ethics law by continuing to uh, do the work that he does. What does he so, do? This is Randy Iser. 
Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So the designation is to the position of the individual, so you'd be designating the entire Community Preservation Act Committee. Uh, special municipal employees, selectmen by statute are automatically are special, uh, as are the planning board and a number of other. <laughs> yes, we are special. <laughs> as a number of other uh, uh, committees in, in the uh, in, uh, town hall. So this. There is every reason to do this, no reason not to do this. Make a motion we accept the recommendation for Mr. Iser. Second. No, not for Mr. Iser, for the committee. For the committee. For the committee. Yeah. Yeah. But his recommendation, yeah. yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then our three favorite topics. Senior Center, Library, and Fire Substation updates. No change orders yet. No change orders yet. I think we're okay. Anything on the senior center which would entail, um, David, you want to say what's been going on here at Town Hall? Sure. Um, construction is underway. Um, so far, there's been zero um, issues discovered that we weren't expecting. So that's that's been good. So it's. Uh, you know, on budget on schedule so far um, and I guess tomorrow they'll be moving that 4,000 pound or 6,000 pound safe out of the front office there and uh, uh, they got the floor braced up in the basement ready to go and um, hopefully within a week or so everything will be wrapped up. So that safe is moving out? Yes, to make room for parking rack and uh, I know that uh, Chris uh, at the DPW authorized Gary to work the weekend so that way he can get some of the stuff done in here uh, when people are out of their offices. So hopefully disturb things a little less. Are they putting that uh, safe up for bid or? That I do not know. There was a lot of discussion about that. And mm -hmm. I was asked to, if it's going to be taken out by the contractor and it's a his or is it going on a town vehicle and we're it's disposing of it? Or what town about vehicle is not declared a surplus at this point. Okay. I, I'd like to see it go on a municipal or something. You know, if we can mm -hmm. put it somewhere. There's some doors on that are heavier than that. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the age of it, uh, it may be yeah. some value, antique value. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely have somebody take a look at that. Yeah. Maybe uh, the auction barn. Mm -hmm. if maybe they're interested instead of municipal. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd get more that way. Yeah, they, they, we might put it somewhere and then transfer it to Hooker School or something like that when we do the auction for the mm -hmm. auction off all the senior stuff. Yeah, that was pretty heavy for to keep, keep moving. moving around. Like oh, that. yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we took an old safe from the garage where my father-in-law passed and put it down in our basement. We had to lower it with a wrecker <laughs> to get it into the basement. <laughs> yeah. It's never coming out again. <laughs> yeah. I bought an old one out of the bank in North Yeah. Okay, so that's so, that. Anything else, David, going on? Uh, they started also on the assessor's office, correct? Yep. Uh, Dan's been out, so the, the goal is to get the wall um, up and enclosed, I guess, this weekend or early next week before he returns, so that way it's interrupting his activities as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's really the two major areas, getting the safe out and getting the wall up, and after that it's a matter of uh, moving things. So. Yeah. We've been moving offices already, setting up phone systems, getting the one wireless uh, network to work for all the computers that have been moved. So people are pulling together, everybody understands what needs to get done. Uh, a lot of people are taking this as an opportunity to clean out their offices. So. Here, here. Here, here. Mm -hmm. And David, how are you finding? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to just put a shredder box in your office by chance? Yeah. Volcano, <laughs> okay, no, so I could just throw things in. Right? That's why we have to pass the human resources manager so they move into David's office as well. He's got to share that space. And <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's probably the only I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anything else on the senior center looking to break ground? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're just basically right now, we're doing some things looking at the uh, sign that says Hadley Senior Center. Um, that's the only debate going around right now a little bit, but waiting for those contracts 
uh, bids to come in should come in. Uh, I guess it's two weeks. The twenty fifth, they're due. So a week from today, um, they're due, and then two weeks from today, we will uh, vote as a select board on a contractor, and then move forward and you know break ground March first or you know soon thereafter, as soon as they can mobilize and get to the site. So mm -hmm. that's good. You got to file some bids in, so okay. Yeah. You might know more about the bids coming in than I do right now. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. And I just, um, I don't know if we've heard anything additional from Colebrook that you want to share about our negotiation with um, Price on the Most Holy Redeemer or what we want to make a statement there. No. So, yes. I don't know if there's any updates. Yeah, yeah, so the, the next part of this is a lease agreement. We had a proposal, yeah. which we approved last week. The lease agreement is the next legal document that, uh, that we'll rece receive. I talked to Colbert today about that, so they're preparing that, and that'll be reviewed by their attorneys. Once we get it, we'll show it to ours. Uh, and I already gave them our attorney's contact information, so maybe they'll do that anyways. So that's the next formality in this process. So we're proceeding as, as originally planned. As you as you voted, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that insurance going to cost us any more for liability or not? No, it's just a matter of uh, putting the uh, diocese on okay. this additional coverage. Thought we had enough of coverage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, moving ahead as uh, stated last week. Yeah, we can, we can just keep the schedule moving. We got a lot of momentum. I mean, David's done a lot here to keep that momentum yep. going. And I think if we can keep that going, we just can really make some progress on these projects. So I think just keeping to the schedule is key. There. Anything from the library side? Uh, no, I mean, the library voted. They approved, um, you know, their, their payment, you know, this was we heard last time. So. Once all the moving parts get a moving, then the next big thing will be the demolition, right? Sounds good. We had a sub-fire station committee meeting on Monday night. We picked the colors and uh, finalizing our efforts for uh, next Tuesday, we go before the planning board uh, for presentation of our plans. Mm -hmm. And um, Drew was at, um, John was at our Yes. <clears throat> Taped our great meeting. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> red on the top, red on the bottom. So, yeah, red roof, which is a. I like it. Just right down the street from my house. Oh, yeah. good. I'll see it every day. It, it really <laughs> looks. It really looks sharp. It's got uh, two tone, uh, different grays, with the red on the bottom, uh, and red on the roof, and white trim. Very pretty. Uh, we also talked about um, when we make our presentation. Um, about why we chose to put the uh, building where it is uh, to maximize the use of the whole property. Also behind the building to the north, um, it's kind of wetlands there, so it's really not quite buildable for anything per se. So the most we would maximize would be the rest of the property there. So if you had taken and put in that building like we've been questioned about, um, to have a straight shot across to Stockbridge, well, they're not always going to come out of the fire station and go straight across to Stockbridge. I mean, we're looking at going north or going south on 47. So um, they actually thought where they placed it would make whoever's coming out of there um, take a look to see safer. safer. It would be safer to put it there instead of just assuming you were going to make a straight shot across. Um, we talked about the barn, the use of the barn. Um, so maybe after this year, we would probably even want to use it uh, as part of town property uh, because of being able to store some of the things that could be stored in there, uh, which which we own as a town. So that was brought up the other night well, also. We've been in a barn. Well, you never know what we got for equipment that could go in a barn. Well, I thought the idea was we were going to try to get rid of some of our well, we Which are, we but, you, we, but you never know what can go in there from other departments and stuff. So 
Right, it was just a thought and something for us to think about. Somebody going to lay a foundation to put in a basketball court? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, if you want to see how you can store equipment in a barn and like that, I, I can show them. And it's uh, some on hands experience. I have to take everything out to get the one thing in the yeah. middle. Yeah, we, we know that. It's like a garage. Yeah, yeah, it's the, yeah. <laughs> Then we talked about also um, when not in use after the, the project, the construction area, uh, what we would see on that other property until we decided what the use of the property would be used for at some future date. Um, probably hay. We don't want to put anything on that property that would probably um, require pesticides or anything else because we've just now, you know, got a clean thing of borings and things like that. Of um, that, so they thought hay would be a good option. Um, that way, it would be growing. It would could be cut down. Um, so that would be a thought for the rest of that Here, property. Straw can be maintained pretty straw. easily that way. Yeah. Correct, <clears throat> and it would it would look decent and be kept up. And it's something that the DPW doesn't have to mow because we can exactly. get a farmer to come in and cut Correct. it twice a season or something. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So that was our discussion the other night. And well, may the floor be with you next week. Tuesday. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. I'm looking next forward Tuesday. to it. I have no doubt. <laughs> David, do you want to do anything from your town administrator's report? Well, there's not a lot to talk about because I've been working almost exclusively on the uh, budget and the annual town meeting board. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that already uh, today. Uh, the, the other thing I've been working a lot with Linda and David Eisenthal, our chief financial advisor, is structuring the loans in order to borrow enough so that we have enough to support the various projects that are going forward and the equipment purchases that are going forward. Um, but not so much that we're overburdening the taxpayers. So it's a series of, of finely tuned borrowings that are going to be occurring throughout the spring and summer. I sent out a save the date reminder of July 10th, where we will have to meet with the, the uh, Chief Financial Advisor approved the uh, loan documents, uh, the loan bid results for the second set of borrowings. We'll be doing additional meetings in September, but that's thinking too far ahead. Uh, but we have we've been working very well with Bond Council, and just today we got a Bond Council approval for the first set of borrowings. So that's very good news indeed. Uh, and the reason why that's good news is because we have a lot of information that we have to collect from a lot of departments and they've been cooperating and being very, very timely in their, their return of information. So that's the other thing that's been keeping me going. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow's the last day to take out papers for our election. And November and February 19th is when those papers are due. Annual elections April 9th. Town meeting is May 2nd, and that brings, and uh, tomorrow we'll be submitting that in our grid. For the laser the fish. For the laser fish. Laser fish. Right. Yep. It's That's pretty right. much ready to go, it's just a matter of inputting the information mm -hmm. and in the send button. Mm -hmm. Anybody on the select board have anything they want to bring yeah, up tonight? I have one thing. Um, that didn't make it onto the agenda, but uh, we received an email somewhere along the line. I think we missed, there, there must have been a communication that had to do with an election for the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the Northern Tier candidate. <clears throat> so, uh, an MPO is a transportation um, based group, so apparently it's federally, federally required, which I didn't know until I Googled it. Um, but it's a regional transportation policy making organization and they always request representation from local government as well as regional transit operators and state transportation agencies. So apparently there are three individuals in our northern tier um, that put their names out there and each municipality has one vote. Uh, those individuals are Jeffrey Sear from South Hadley. He's a newly elected um, official uh, in South Hadley. Um, Lynn Greismer, who is the newly elected head of the Amherst Town Council. Um, she did win by a fairly large margin. I think um, Joyce Christian and I had some yeah. conversation with her. At, uh, 
and you've talked to her before, um, then Nicole LaChapelle, who's the mayor of East Hampton. So uh, the, the election kind of came and went, but apparently it resulted in a three-way tie, um, and they realized that we hadn't voted. <laughs> so the request has been made that that uh, if, if we're comfortable that we... We're the deciders. <laughs> uh, yeah, or, there may be other municipalities too. It was just pointed out like, hey, could you guys vote? So uh, David was kind enough to find the information on the candidates. And just very quickly, I can tell you that um, Jeffrey uh, in South Hadley has served on the Appropriations Committee, Capital Planning Committee, and School Building Committees. And he's the water superintendent for Fire District Number 1. Okay. Um, Lynn Greisimer is actually, uh, she has a pretty extensive background in economic development. She was the head of the Donahue Institute, the um, executive director for many, many years. Um, and she's worked on, or served on a variety of town, uh, let's see, public works, fire station advisory committee, fire station study committee. Uh, sure. Well, she's just newly elected to the Amherst Council, so she hasn't been on the select board. Um, but she participated in the Greater Boston Regional Economic Compact, um, Girl Scouts, I mean, so she, she's had a fair amount of experience. Um, but again, most of it being really, you know, a couple of decades working, uh, heading up the Donahue Institute and all about job creation and economic development. And then uh, Nicole LaChapelle, uh, prior to becoming mayor, East Hampton ZBA, Holyoke Chamber of Commerce, um, Children's Museum, Women's Fund. Um, so, you know, personally, I'm a little bit biased because I know Lynn better, and you know, Nicole. Nicole, I think would be great, but I would think she would have her hands full just being the mayor. Mm -hmm. You know, they have so many initiatives going on over there. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, I just don't know that well, but it doesn't look like there's an awful lot, and yeah, any real tie to transportation. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the mayor of Northampton is on the uh, is on the MPO already, correct? He's a member. I don't know that. I don't, he, he may very well be. She said maybe. He could be. Is this part of Pioneer Valley planning? No, it's um, it's, a it's right. the state. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's MPO activities group, part of the Office of Transportation Planning for mm. for the Commonwealth. So. I mean, I, I'd be comfortable recommending that Lynn represent us. I don't know how anybody yes. else feels. I can make a motion that we recommend Lynn for the MPO. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, um, Madam Chair. Yes. Who would like to? Mark the mark. Yeah. Go for it. David, do you mind setting that in tomorrow, or I'm happy to scan it? No, no, no. I'll just put Tana Hadley. Yep. Valentine's Day <laughs> to all of our sweethearts. <laughs>